Welcome back to uh, Cuthbert Cooks in Albasha 2 in Dubai United Arab Emirates. So today we're uh, going to finish off those little uh, dry rub short ribs but before we do that we're just going to make a little salsa. I thought we'd serve it with a little salsa. Again young chefs this is something that's quite simple to do. You read one recipe then you adapt yourself as well. So what I've gone, I've gone through my fridge at home and I've found uh, a bit of papaya. I've found some onion, I went outside, I picked a nice little uh, lemon uh, off the tree and a lime off the tree. I've got a little red devil, a little red one here, and I've also got some uh, chunky pineapple in here. And then I'm going to uh, add a little bit of uh, whole grain mustard. And then if you remember from the recipe for the, for the spare ribs, we actually had some uh, date syrup. So I'm going to use a little bit of date syrup to help um, sweeten up the overall salsa. So just very simply, we're going to chop up our, uh, our white onion. Again, as I said yesterday, I like the old white onions. They're a little bit sweeter. You know, they, they're just nice. You can eat them raw as well. They're not so pungent for the, uh, for the people to eat. So, you know, basics of a nice uh, salsa is something sweet, something sour, something to give some crunch and some texture and always a little bit of fruit. You can throw in a handful of chopped coriander at the end, chopped parsley. You know, you can adapt it as you want. You toss it around a little bit in a saucepan until it becomes a little bit warm, so then it's a warm salsa. So it's not rocket science. We pop it all into a bowl. We're going to chop up a little bit of this nice uh, tomato we've got here. Nice little tomatoes I got down in the supermarket. Quite simple. We're just going to take the core out. As you can see, back to food waste. That's the only waste that I've brought out of the entire tomato, is that, yeah? So many times I walk by rubbish bins where chefs have just cut off the end of this, end of the tomato, and tossed it in the bin, yeah, because we don't like it. Well, for salsa, you want to keep it all. And you don't have to keep chopping the, uh, the ends off your tomatoes. You can chop them off, or you can just take the eye out. Yeah, it takes a little bit of extra time, yeah, and it uh, takes a little bit more, uh, more skill with your knife to make sure that you're not wasting your tomatoes but you pull them out nicely and then you've got the whole tomato you're able to use yeah if you don't like to use them toss them into the stock yeah if you've got a nice uh, stock going and if you've got a nice um, if you've got a nice jus like we were doing or braising that we were doing earlier on you can then just add that into the braising I'm going to roughly chop these tomatoes I want the juice out of the tomato as well so nice juicy tomatoes because that's going to help us with the um, with the liquid for the for the salsa very simple rough chop just making sure that we get nice little dice done and then pop it into our glass bowl so already we've got the color coming into the um, already we've got the color coming into the um, into the salsa the papaya I've just peeled the papaya off gonna slice him down just going to slice him very simply and I make sure I get some nice uh, chunky bits I wanted a little bit rough cut so I'm not going to uh, not going to sit there and brunoise him going to make it nice and rough because I want to have some nice uh, feel in the mouth when we eat the when we eat the 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 salsa very simple just chop him away doesn't all have to be even we're not in a fine dining restaurant cooking at home, cooking for friends, cooking for family. Most important, it's got to taste good. Yeah? If it doesn't taste good, everyone will complain. Doesn't matter if you're your family or your guest. Yeah? So we make sure that it's nice and, nice and chunky. So, so you've got some nice flavor. When you bite into each ingredient, you get to taste each ingredient as well. Just give me board a quick wipe. Get the sliminess of the uh, sliminess of the uh, fire off. I'm also going to add a little avocado to this one, gives another nice little colour. So just cut our avocados in half, feel the, feel the stone, just run the knife around the outside of the stone, twist him off. I use a spoon to peel my, my avocados because then I don't get any waste. Just put that in. Just run the, run the spoon between the flesh and the avocado so we don't get any waste. Yeah, we get a nice shape of the avocado as well. Anything that's left on the, on the skin, we're just going to scrape that out, pop that straight into the bowl. 
Very careful just to remove the stone, give it a turn. So we've got the avocado out there. So we're just gonna chop up the avocado quickly, give it a nice little, uh, little rough cut as well. Just adds a little, another, another little flavor dimension into the, um, into the salsa. Also gives a little Mexican feel. Where the Mexican cuisine's famous for all their salsas. I mean, really, it's uh, up to you guys, up to the young chefs of how they can actually think about what should go into a salsa and how to make it. So then we've got a uh, little bit of lemon juice. Yeah, just want to squeeze that off into the um, squeeze that off into the uh, into the salsa. Give it some nice sourness. Got another one here. Give that a good old squeeze. That'll help preserve the colour of the avocado as well. Pop those in the compost. Compost, you can utilise the uh, all your vegetables for a composter. If you've got a composter in your hotel. Little lime from the tree outside in the garden, now Basha. Again, going to add a little bit of lime juice as well. And then I'm going to also, what I'm going to do with the other one, I'm going to take a little bit of the skin off. I want to take some of the skin off the, um, off the other one. I'm just going to finely julienne it. So I'm going to peel it carefully. Just trying to get not too much of the pith. Just to try and get the, uh, just get little pieces of the skin off. Because the skin, lime skin's quite nice when you pop it inside as well. Gives a nice little, little flavour. These are quite intense, these limes, they're locally grown, so our climate's a bit harsh here, so they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit drier than, a, than the normal juicy lime. So I'm just gonna really finely julienne up the, the little bits of skin that I've managed to, to peel off our little lime. And then I'm gonna pop that into the salsa as well. And what we're gonna do with this salsa at the end, this is what's gonna form the base of what we're going to serve our uh, beautiful, our beautiful uh, dry rub short ribs. Yeah, going to add a little bit of mustard into there as well. We're going to drizzle some olive oil. Oh, Rama olive oil. Remember, we had our dibs, our date syrup. So we're just going to add a little bit more sweetness to it from the date syrup, again getting the flavour of dates. One little red devil. So we're gonna cut up our little red devil, nice and fine, super fine, seeds and all. So that's gonna give a little kick. Of course, uh, make sure you don't touch your eyes after that one. Here's a nice little bird's eye, that one. Pop him in. And then, couple of bits of uh, pineapple chunks. Got some pineapple chunks and also a little bit of juice there from the pineapple. So that, that'll give it another little uh, add of juice. And then we're just gonna toss this round. We're just gonna mix this up. You see the color coming in, all the different colors. You actually got a nice bit of sauce coming in as well because there's the juice of the pineapple and the tomato juice is in there. And then we're going to leave that in the fridge. I don't want to get that chilled down and I want to have this ready for when the short ribs come out of the oven. So we've got the, the salsa done. I'm going to add a couple of grinds of salt. And then from my, my, three, my three pepper mix, which was white pepper, black, and pink peppercorns. Little touch of crushed pepper in there. Another mix. And then we're gonna finish this off a little bit later. I'm gonna pop some toasted garlic, yeah? 
So this will add a little intense flavor. I'm gonna put it in now, I'm gonna sprinkle it over the top just as we pop the, the ribs on top of the salsa so that this gives a nice little bite when you bite into it as well. So let's see how the ribs are doing. So I've just pulled out the, uh, the ribs. Now if you remember, we dry rubbed these yesterday. I've added them in the oven, 160. Once again, they've just come out. So we're gonna test them like we did yesterday, off camera. Ooh, looking good. So basically what we've got here is a little packet of beautifully, see that, look at that now. So we've got our, we've got six ribs, if you remember, we cut them, we cut them off yesterday. So they, these have just cooked up nicely. We've got a, quite a bit of juice in the bottom of the pan, which is okay, we're going to use that up as well. We can. The juice we can actually use in a, in a little sauce to, uh, to baste on top of these as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just get the other one out as well. So I've just got those out, I'm just going to put the other ones, pull the other ones out as well. Again, these have cooked off really nicely and as we can see, they've held their shape as well. Now these ones, unlike the braised ones we had last time, have held their shape really nicely because I want to actually serve these on a tray so that people get one piece each as a main course or people can share them or you can then actually cut them up. So the next thing what we're going to do is we need to give them a little bit of colour, yeah? We want them to caramelise up, yeah? Because they've been, they've been brazing away inside the little pouch of aluminium foil. All the the marinade has gone inside the meat which is great but now we just want to do a little bit of a little bit of glazing on the top yeah so what I'm going to do I'm going to utilize a little beautiful South African style um, rib sauce or steak sauce that my good mate Martin Colbold sent me up from uh, Johannesburg because I went down to Johannesburg in January for a World Chefs uh, competition where we were doing the uh, global, global Chef semi-final down in South Africa and we went to these rib joints and they had some beautiful, uh, beautiful sauces of marinade so Martin brought me home a couple of uh, bottles, I got about 12 in my cupboard so I'm just going to get a little pastry brush if I can find it, there we go and then into the magic cupboard to select one of the sauces. We've got steak maker marinade. What else have we got in here? Uh, let's use a good old Bry series, yeah? A good old Bry series. So what we're gonna do with the Bry series, very simple. Bry series, pour him on top. Little bit on top here. Brush him on, brush him on, give him a little brush. We're gonna get a little bit of brazing, a uh, little bit of color on there. That's a little lovely, look at that, yummy. And then we're gonna fortify this one. A little bit of steers. Steak marinade, give that a bit of a shake. We just want to drizzle a little bit of that on each one as well. Getting, the, getting some nice flavors going in there. Beauty, beauty. And then the final bit. Get a little bit more sugary, so we get a nice bit of color. We're gonna drizzle more dibs all over the top of these. Got our dates going. Little brush with the pastry brush, make sure it's all covered nicely. And then we're gonna slip these back in the oven and I've just slipped the, uh, the broiler on. So we're gonna color these under the broiler. Sorry, Mr. Dave, I didn't do a barbecue or else what we could have done is fired up the barbie and we could have actually finished those off on a, on a nice char griller outside the back. But, as we can't cook inside, we're gonna use our, our char broiler, or our little broiler in the oven. So I just brought these ones out of the oven. You can see how they've nicely caramelized on top with those extra little marinades that we did. 
and you can see the colors come through nicely got the other one coming out now oh look at that this is yummy I'm gonna point that at the camera code so you can get a look at that look at that beautifully beautifully done yeah and what we're also going to do just as a special treat I took the, the juices, I took the roasting juices, I've reduced them right down to a glaze. Yeah, so you can just see that. I've reduced it right down to a thick glaze. Last little bit goes on top, just a little bit on top. Yeah, a little bit on top, a little bit on top, a little bit on top. So then we've got that. That just gives it the, the extra flavor that was within the, um, the marinade has gone into that to really intensify and there's some really great flavors with cumin and the coriander that we put in. So that's really done a, done a great justice to the short rib. Just pop these over here for a minute. So as it's Mother's Day here in the UAE and in Australia actually, so this, this, this dish is dedicated to our mum, Josephine. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna sit down in a minute and have a nice little nice little dinner. So we put the little salsa, and as you can see, the salsa has marinated nicely as well in its own juices. Yeah, we're gonna have a little bit on there. There's five of us, so we're gonna have uh, two plates, one plate for me, and one plate for everybody else. <laughs> So the salsa is going to form the base, so it's a hot and cold. I think uh, my, uh, my good friend Uwe McKeel, the president of the Emirates Culinary Guild and also the, um, the president of the Culinary Guild and also the director of kitchens over at Radisson Blue, he liked this one because he likes these sort of dishes with uh, sweetness and sourness and the, the fresh fruit and something sour as well. So all we do now is we take our beautiful one piece per person, because remember, we've cut them up. Look at that, we pop those on there. We pop this one on here. We take another piece from here. And we keep the other two pieces for me, just in case. So we've still got two. So we've got our two plates done. Just make a third plate quickly, because we've got two lovely little pieces left. Use up our, our salsa. That salsa is really going to give it a nice, a nice extra touch. We get our nicely glazed up beef short rib. Just going to move this aside. And then as you remember what I said earlier, we're going to finish it with a lovely bit of crunchy garlic on top. So we're going to put the garlic flakes, the toasted garlic flakes on top. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of this with my Michael Strapmanis oven mitts. And I'm just going to drizzle the last little bit of that glaze on each rib so they're nice and shiny when they go out to the table. And I'd like to call a very special lady into the kitchen to walk in behind behind the kitchen. Mama, where are you? And this dishes are dedicated to my lovely wife and Cody's mum and Cody's mum. Happy Mother's Day, babe. Thank you. From Cuthbert Cooks to everybody. Bon appetit and enjoy some beautiful dry rubbed short ribs with a little pineapple, papaya and pomery mustard salsa. See you soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs>